In Christianity, the Gospel Greek, Euangelion translate. Euangelion, Old English, Godspell, or the Good News, is the news of the coming of the Kingdom of God Mark 1 Paul's Gospel is of Jesus's death on the cross and resurrection to restore people's relationship with God. It may also include the descent of the Holy Spirit upon believers and the second coming of Jesus. The message of Good News is described as a narrative in the four canonical Gospels. The message of good news is described as theology in many of the New Testament letters. It relates to the saving acts of God due to the work of Jesus on the cross and Jesus' resurrection from the dead which bring reconciliation atonement between people and God. The Apostle Paul gave the following summary translated into English of this good news gospel in one of his letters to Christians in the city of Corinth. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, in which also you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1–4 NASB. Christian theology describes the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ not as a new concept, but one that has been foretold throughout the Old Testament and was prophetically preached even at the time of the fall of man as contained in Genesis 3.14–15. It is called Proto-Evangelion or Proto-Gospel. Etymology <inaudible> <inaudible> Gospel is the Old English translation of Greek euangelion, meaning, good news. This may be seen from analysis of euangelion u -u, good", plus angelos angelos messenger", plus ion ion diminutive suffix. The Greek term was Latinized as evangelium in the Vulgate, and translated into Latin as bona annunciatio. As exemplified in the calendar inscription of Preen, dated about 9 BC, this coined Greek term euangelion was used at the time of the Roman Empire to herald the good news of the arrival of a kingdom, the reign of a king that brought a war to an end, so that all people of the world who surrendered and pledged allegiance to this king would be granted salvation from destruction. The calendar inscription of Preen speaks of the birthday of Caesar Augustus as the beginning of the gospel announcing his kingdom, with a Roman decree to start a new calendar system based on the year of Augustus Caesar's birth. Into this context, the words of the Gospel of Mark are striking, "...the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God." Mark 1 verse 1 ESV Jesus is thus heralded as the king who ends war by conquering people's allegiance, in contrast to the Roman Caesar title. The Gospel recorded in Mark 1 verse 1 heralds Jesus Christ, with Christ title not being a personal name but the title of the promised Messiah or «anointed one». In Old English, it was translated as Godspell God, good", plus spel news". The Old English term was retained as Gospel in Middle English Bible translations and hence remains in use also in Modern English. The written accounts of the life and teaching of Jesus are also generally known as gospels. Topic in Acts. The good news can be summarized in many ways, reflecting various emphases. Cambridge New Testament scholar C. H. Dodd has summarized the Christian good news as taught by the Apostle Peter in the Book of Acts see Kerygma, Acts 2 verses 14–41, Acts 3 verse 11–4–4, Acts 10 verses 34–43 The age of fulfillment has dawned, the «latter days» foretold by the prophets. Acts 3 verses 18–26 this has taken place through the birth, life, ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Acts 2 verses 22–31 By virtue of the resurrection, Jesus has been exalted at the right hand of God as messianic head of the new Israel. Acts 2 verses 32–36 The Holy Spirit in the Church is the sign of Christ's present power and glory. Acts 10 verses 44–48 the messianic age will reach its consummation in the return of Christ. Acts chapter 3 verses 20 to 21. An appeal is made for repentance with the offer of forgiveness, the Holy Spirit, and salvation. 
Acts chapter 2 verses 37 to 41. Topic: Broader biblical background. Generally speaking, the gospel of Jesus Christ, or the message of salvation, justification, and sanctification, is explained by the Apostle Paul in his Epistle to the Romans, especially in chapters 3 to 8. Christian writers and teachers often present the good news set within the context of the storyline of the whole Bible. This discipline, of understanding the Christian message in terms of biblical salvation history, is known as biblical theology. This attempts to posit a connection between Old Testament and the Christian teachings of the good news about the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. For example, the Roman Catholic Church promotes the teaching of the good news in the context of biblical salvation history as a «fundamental part of the content» of its instruction. There are numerous exponents of the biblical theology approach to understanding the good news. Some Christian teachers and biblical theologians who have published descriptions of the Bible author's message in terms of salvation history include Kostenberger and O'Brien who have published A Biblical Theology of Mission, and Goldsworthy who writes from an evangelical Christian perspective. Many Bible scholars and Christian groups have placed similar descriptions on the Internet. There is a degree of variation in perspective between such descriptions. However, the main focus is generally the same. The Bible storyline tells of God working throughout history to save a people for himself, and these saving acts are completed through the person and work of Jesus. Topic: In various Christian movements. The good news is described in many different ways in the Bible. Each one reflects different emphases, and describes part or all of the biblical narrative. Christian teaching of the Good News—including the preaching of the Apostles in the Book of Acts—generally focuses upon the resurrection of Jesus and its implications. Sometimes in the Bible, the Good News is described in other terms, but it still describes God's saving acts. For example, the Apostle Paul taught that the Good News was announced to the patriarch Abraham in the words, "...all nations will be blessed through you." Galatians chapter 3 verses 6 to 9 cf Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 3 Topic <inaudible> Liberation theology Liberation theology, articulated in the teachings of Latin American Catholic theologians Leonardo Boff and Gustavo Gutierrez, emphasizes that Jesus came not only to save humanity, but also to liberate the poor and oppressed. A similar movement among the Latin American evangelical movement is Integral Mission, where the Church is seen as an agent for positively transforming the wider world, in response to the Good News. This can likewise be seen in black theology of certain African and African American Christians. Christian mission The Christian missions movement believes the Christian good news to be a message for all peoples, of all nations, tribes, cultures and languages. This movement teaches that it is through the good news of Jesus that the nations of humanity are restored to relationship with God, and that the destiny of the nations is related to this process. Missiology professor Howard A. Snyder writes, God has chosen to place the worldwide church with Christ at the very center of his plan to reconcile the world to himself. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 20 to 23. Another perspective described in the writings of the apostle Paul is that it is through the good news of Jesus death and resurrection and the resulting worship of people from all nations that evil is defeated on a cosmic scale. Reflecting on the third chapter of Paul's letter to the Ephesians 3, Howard A. Snyder writes God's plan for the worldwide church extends to the fullest extent of the cosmos. By God's manifold wisdom, the worldwide church displays an early fullness of what Christ will accomplish at the conclusion of all the ages. The spectacle is to reach beyond the range of humanity, even to the angelic realms. The worldwide church is to be God's display of Christ's reconciling love. See also Biblical theology Book of Revelation Council of Jerusalem 
Evangelism Fall of Man Gospel in Islam Logos Messiah Ministry of Jesus Resurrection of Jesus Threefold Office Footnotes <laughs>